She's a weight management physician. Her husband is a foodie. And together, about 20 years ago, they combined forces to create a gourmet food service business. Hello, and welcome to Living Well with Robin Stoloff, empowering you to live a healthier life. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll keep you posted on my most recent episode. Today, we'll talk about that business, about the obesity crisis in America, and about the science behind weight management. I'm so pleased to welcome Dr. Caroline Cedarquist. She, as I said, is a weight management physician, and she is now uh, the head of the whole company, Bistro MD, that is just doing wonderful things for people. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Cedar Christ. Good morning. Thank you, Robin. So tell us a little bit about your background and how this Bistro MD came to be and about the science behind weight management and why it is not a one size fit all when it comes to losing weight or maintaining weight. Yeah, so I had interest in weight management because my entire family has weight problems, parents, sisters, extended family. So I was very interested. And when I went to medical school, it was interesting how little attention was actually given to diet, lifestyle, treatments for weight. Um, It was in the years actually prior to the big explosion of bariatric surgery, for example. So it was sort of, there wasn't much that doctors expected to do to be able to help people to lose weight except recommend lose weight, eat less, exercise more, that type of thing. So in my practice in family medicine, I had so many patients who had high blood pressure, high cholesterol, who had cancers that were actually related to weight, so many things. And many times I could tell my patients, you know, if you were able to lose 20 pounds or 30 pounds, you probably wouldn't need this blood pressure medication anymore. And there were were not any patients who said, I want to be overweight. I enjoy (laughs) being overweight. I like taking extra medicine. But what they said is I've tried to lose weight and it doesn't work for me. Or I've tried so many things I've given up. So I really decided then that I was going to increase my education and make this the focus of my career. Over the years, what I found is when you do a comprehensive treatment, when you look at the things that are going on with the individual person and you create a meal plan that works to correct the most common things that are going on, people can indeed lose weight and they can keep weight off and they don't have to resort to things like surgery. It is a startling statistic. I've been doing this for a long time and I always research how many people are overweight, how many people are obese in our country. And it's alarming. Every time I look up that statistic, the number is growing. About three out of four people in our country, adults, are overweight and 40% are obese. And the problem is also growing in our children. Yet we spend so much money, billions of dollars on weight loss management. It doesn't seem right. We should all be in great shape for all that money spent. So what is going on? What is the the block? Why is it so hard for people to lose weight? Well, we live in an environment that really encourages weight gain, to be honest. Um, A lot of us are super busy. We rely on convenience foods. And those types of foods tend to be high in calories, high in carbohydrate, high in sugar, high in fat. And food companies don't make money by having people eat less. So there's a tremendous marketing machine present as well. We've also become less active as time has gone on. You know, who walks into a bank anymore? People drive up. Does anyone walk in to pay for gas? No. Um, When I had kids in car seats, if I walked up to, uh, drove up to a gas station that didn't allow me to pay at the pump, I drove to the next gas station. It was too difficult. But one of the things that a lot of people don't realize is that if you live in an environment that encourages weight gain, And you may know that you're not eating well or you're putting on a little weight. You think that eventually if I eat less later, I'll just lose the weight. But once you gain weight, your body does change metabolically. And that's a big thing that a lot of people don't realize. In my um, medical practice, I worked with so many patients who had evidence of a metabolic condition that made it easy to continue to gain weight and hard to lose weight. So they truly were 
eating less calories, exercising more, but gaining weight anyway. And then it becomes so frustrating. This so very do do common, then? yeah. well, you-, oh, you have to identify it. So this very common metabolic condition is called insulin resistance. And it's very, very common. And it develops relatively quickly when people gain weight. There are other conditions associated with the significant development of insulin resistance, like the transition to menopause. So many women who I took care of um, were normal weight their whole life. Everything they did worked for them. You know, they always worked at it. It wasn't like easy to maintain a normal weight, but they hit a uh, hormonal transition and they gain weight effortlessly despite doing the things that always worked. Yeah, I hear you. (laughs) Right. So in my practice, we would get a lot of information about symptoms. You know, we would certainly do lab work, but certainly on the podcast, maybe that's not available to everybody, but there were symptoms associated with that, you know, primarily weight gain in the abdomen, Uh, people waking up in the morning and not necessarily feeling hungry at all. Like a lot of people would say, I'm not hungry in the morning. I can't eat in the morning. I, I feel better if I don't eat or If I eat breakfast, because I've been told that's what I should do, then I'm three times hungrier an hour later than if I didn't have breakfast at all. And what's happening is the body is very dysregulated where uh, the body is able to metabolize glucose and the use of the hormone insulin. So there's tremendous swings up and down in blood sugar that cause hunger and also facilitate weight gain. Um, Luckily, this is treatable once you realize that it is present and it can be treatable with the right meal plan. Okay, so let's talk about that. And that's where Bistro MD comes in or other plans as well. I mean, there's, there's people eating on their own and preparing their own food, but that can be difficult as as you're saying. We are in a fast paced society and we've Mm -hmm. learned to be let quick, convenient, whatever easy, especially when you have kids. And when you're in that mode of, we all know what that feels like. You're working, you have kids. It's hard. Right. It is hard. So you develop this, this company, Bistro MD, where you provide you know, these well, gourmet meals. I started it as my medical practice first, because okay. that's what I did 30 years ago. So, uh, you know, we found that if we made sure our patients had the right amount of protein at each meal, that was very critical, and the right balance of carbohydrate with enough fiber and low sugar and a healthy balance of fat, that my patients could lose weight, we could actually see improvements in lab parameters like blood sugar and things like that. And they could do it without feeling starved with these ravenous fluctuations of blood sugar. You know, many people had tried the, I'm not going to eat at all, or I'll eat cardboard. It doesn't work and it's not sustainable. We want to preserve muscle tissue in the process of losing fat. Now, when I started, all of my patients cooked. We had several dietitians, we instructed patients. And the idea from Bistro MD came from my own patients who said, this is great. I feel good. I'm finally losing weight, but it's a lot of work. Can you yeah. cook for me? And it's like, I have four kids of my own. <laughs> I cannot be cooking for you. Right. And there weren't that many options present in town. Or if there were some pre-made foods, they were extraordinarily high in sodium or chemicals or preservatives. And I determined that I would like to help create with someone who is actually masterful at cooking, my husband, um, a program that I would feel comfortable feeding my own children and my own patients and myself. And that's how Bistro MD came to be. And it's really making a difference for people. I looked on your website, people lost 50 pounds, 40 pounds, a lot of weight. I mean, significant, uh, a significant amount of weight that is transform their lives. When people lose that kind of weight, they become a different person because it doesn't just affect you physically. It affects you emotionally. It affects you in every which way. It changes your life losing that yes. amount of weight. Well, you are correct. It changes you emotionally. It does change the way you look. But as a doctor, what got me excited, I was always happy for my patients to look better, feel better, emotionally feel better. I looked at what was happening internally high cholesterol levels dropping, 
low HDL levels getting better, triglycerides dropping, insulin, blood sugar, and hemoglobin A1C for my patients who are diabetic or pre-diabetic getting better. I knew that, yeah, I'm not just helping people lose weight. I'm helping them live longer and better and healthier. And usually without needing to resort to medicine. As a practicing medical doctor, it was very frustrating for me to write four blood pressure medicines for somebody, three medicines for diabetes. That's the way medicine is done when you have only a few minutes to interact with somebody. And I'm not saying that medication is bad, but if we can find the right type of program that works with people's blood sugar issues and the metabolic conditions that develop from weight gain itself, they can get off medicines and they are so much healthier. Absolutely. And I, you know, this is my big pet peeve. I really think we need to start when people are younger. I think we need to really educate our children and make sure they know about nutrition at a very young age, nutrition and fitness, because what good is it to teach our kids to make money in life and be successful if they're not well, if you're not a, if you don't feel good in your life and you're sick and you have, you know, all these issues, as you spoke about, what good is it? So we're teaching them about being successful and doing this and that, but it's really important. The basis of a good life is good health. And I just absolutely I go on, and on about that. <laughs> no, you're absolutely correct. You know, so many of my patients were extremely successful people in every realm of that word, financially, um, you know, philanthropists, philanthrop philanthropists uh, they were physicians themselves, educators, PhDs, extremely successful, but they were busy and sometimes their lives got away from them or they had genetic conditions that made it easier to gain weight in the first place, or they went through hormonal transitions and all of a sudden they're there, their body has changed. Their mm -hmm. body is now more efficient at storing fat and it's so hard to lose. Absolutely. But I think another thing about like, you know, educating our children, absolutely, you're right on there. Um, we do want to get our kids to have less sugar in their diet. Everyone needs to eat more fruits and vegetables. But the key from a weight loss physician is food has to taste good. I can't tell you how many patients said to me, Dr. Cedarquist, I will chew nails if you tell me that will help me lose weight. And it's like, I don't want my patients to chew nails or whatever. <laughs> suffer, or go 20 suffer. They hours. figured they had to suffer. Yes, yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, like there's all these trends now with intermittent fasting and some of these really long fasts and 20 hours without eating and all this other stuff. You know, it's not necessary. You can eat well. Food that's good for you can taste good, but it takes work and effort. And that's where the partnership with my husband came in. You know, for me, I will admit, fully, I'm a lazy eater. For me, grilled chicken, broccoli, every day, fine. Salad with lettuce and like maybe tomato, that's it. You know, yeah. I, I, you know, not a foodie, but my husband took over all the cooking earlier in our marriage because I would look at what I would prepare like a turkey sandwich and he would add red onion and a slice of avocado and some, you know, Dijon mustard or all of a sudden it was like, why did I even eat? You know, this is so much better. Yes, and it's yes. not that it bumped the calories through the roof, but it was actually something that was enjoyable. Absolutely. And yeah, I we, think I mean, that's... we're emotional. Eating is attached to our emotions. We don't just eat to survive. We, we enjoy eating. It's part of our lives. So well, I think one of the things, yes, one of the things about Bistro MD that is changing the conversation about weight management and health is that being healthy and eating well can be wonderful. You're taking good care of yourself. You're not sacrificing. You're not torturing yourself and putting up with something for a time. Because we all know that when we do those types of things, it's not sustainable and it's not long-term. Many of the clients on Bistro MD have been clients for long periods of time. They'll lose weight and then they'll use the meals to maintain their weight. I personally 
love many of the Bistro MD meals and they're an easy breakfast, lunch, or dinner, depending upon what my schedule has going on. And it's not a sacrifice to eat them. Uh, my family and I fight over some of our favorites. Oh, you have the sweet <laughs> onion frittata with the turkey sausage. I want that. You know, I'll have the goat cheese one. You know, none of these are sacrifices compared to the amount of time that it would take to make something like that. You know, it can't compare with things that I can do on my own. Then you have 150 different meals and you have different plans for different people because that's something I wanted to address as well. Not every eating, I hate the word diet, not every eating plan <laughs> works for everyone. You know, you'll, you'll have a friend that lost weight on some program. You think, I'm going to do that too. And for whatever reason, the way your body is, it doesn't work for you. It's not the right plan. How do you know? How do you know what is appropriate for you or not? Uh, different things work for different people. Uh, that is absolutely true. But we do know that some things work for almost all people. We know that when you are cutting calories and you want to lose fat, you need to make sure that you have the right amount of lean protein in the diet. So all of our meals have adequate lean protein, but some of our patients need to be gluten-free, for example. So a large percent of our meals are gluten-free. Many of uh, the clients of Bistro MD need to be um, lower sodium, like all the meals are low sodium but some need very low sodium because they might have congestive heart failure or something like that. So there's a lot of different things. Almost everyone, there's things that nutritionists and doctors in public health say across the board, everyone needs more fruits and vegetables. Everyone yes. needs more fiber. Everyone needs healthy sources right. of um, protein. But you hear everyone about these diets, needs the minimal processing. Diet. You hear a paleo diet. People say they lose weight on that. You know, I, I don't get that. I, I just don't get that. But that's, you know, it'll be a trend that people will do. And those types of diets, I think, can be very risky. Well, the thing about paleo and some of the things that are out there is the paleo is having enough protein, but they specifically cut out other things. Like you can't have dairy, you can't have any type of grain, anything that was before the time of agriculture. Now, Grains are not a big evil. The amount of portions of a grain that people tend to eat tend to be the problem. So one of the things about Bistro MD meals is they do have some rice and some quinoa and some healthy grains, but we mix it in with servings of vegetables. And a lot of times, even people who don't prefer vegetables say that, oh, I really like it. They feel like they're having a larger portion of rice but we know that a lot of prepared meals um, that are either frozen or served in restaurants are all done with the inexpensive ingredients of the grain. You're given a monstrous amount of pasta and a monstrous amount of rice, and to be honest, a monstrous amount of protein too, but you end up feeling virtuous because you eat only half of it, but it actually was four times the serving that it yes, should have been. Yes, exactly. It's a lot of it has to do with balance. That is true. And there's something we talked about in my radio show that I wanted to bring up to you because I'm always sort of on the fence on this one. So I love ice cream. And I just know that if I have ice cream in my house, especially mint chocolate chip, it will call me, Robin, there is ice cream in your freezer. <laughs> Come eat it. So I particularly for my purposes, do not buy it. I just don't buy it. I don't buy junk. I don't have any kind of junk in my house. You can't find a cookie. You can't find anything because I don't want it for my kids and I don't want it for myself. That's my way of doing it. Other people say, you have to learn to get control over that. You should have the ice cream in your house and just have a little bit of it. But I don't know. This is a question I have for you. If you're the type of person that really can't resist it. Should you just try to avoid it altogether? Or do you think you should learn to just have a small quantity of it? That is my question. Well, in my practice, we had patients that would fall into the category of what we would call abstainers, you know, or moderates. So it depends what type of person you are. And it depends upon the food, like no. And what I mean by that is some people can have 10 potato chips, and that's it. They don't have to have the whole bag. Those would be the like moderates. <laughs> well, there are, there yeah. are, there are people. And, and in my practice, I had patients who would say, if I have one square of chocolate at night, I feel like I've had a treat. I've had enough. But if you tell me I can't have any, then I wake up in the morning wanting chocolate. 
And I never want chocolate in the morning. So for that person, the moderate use of this so-called problem food or challenging food is much, much better. Mm -hmm. Whereas other patients would laugh at me and say, a square of chocolate? (laughs) If I have a I open, square, I'm yeah. having a bar of chocolate yes, and then yes. I'm having a bag of cereal and all these other things. You know, f- so for that person, they are much better to abstain from that food. But as I, you know, up, and what I mean, abstain in a way that you don't feel um, comfortable with it. Like such a person could have a piece of chocolate if they were to buy it individually out at a store where they're not gonna buy it. Like for you example, your mint chocolate chip, you could have a cone of it or a cup of it while That's you're out. That's what I will do. I will go enjoy to, if I it. really want it, yep, yep. And I will do it that way. There's $7 now for a cone. <laughs> you can buy <laughs> a gallon of ice cream, but I'd rather do that than have it in my house. So if I want a treat, go out with my family, I will do that. I, I don't feel like, oh God, I can never have ice cream again in my life, but I don't crave it. And I don't think about it because it's not in, it's not in my reach in my home. And that's just how I have to do it. Um, right. Some people and have that issue different. with bread. Bread can be yes. a big problem for people. So what do you do about that? You don't really want to cut out all bread, but what if you have it in your house and you just can't stop eating it? I mean, that can be a problem. Well, a lot of people do have a problem with bread and um, sometimes it's best not to bring it in. Like again, for the individual food, that that would be something if they went out and they're going to go to lunch and have a sandwich or toast or something like that. It doesn't matter what the individual food is. But what I find is that for each individual, it's not every food. You'll find that most people are not like, oh, I can't have bread. I can't have chocolate. I can't have chips. You know, they they do find that there are things that are treats for them that they can have in moderation that are there. Uh, And if not, they find some other things that are um, good substitutes for it. Uh, Like in my clinical practice, many of our patients would find some kind of a low calorie ice cream bar or pop that they enjoyed, but it wasn't the type that they felt they needed to, you know, eat the entire package of six Mm -hmm. with but they still felt that they were still on plan. And I think that ends up having us have a more healthy relationship with food. The bottom line is we all can't eat everything all the time that is out there and maintain a normal weight. And as you said, you know, if you're normal weight, you're by far in the minority. And if you're overweight, you're by far in the majority. So it's a difficulty out there for many people who are successful in many things making your life easier by having pre-portioned foods or meals is sometimes very, very helpful. And I can't stress enough how helpful it is in terms of giving people control by having the balance at an individual meal where the protein, the fiber, the vegetables cause blood sugar to be stable and not into a place where people feel out of control and over hungry. And it really ends up working so well. Yeah, I started uh, changing my thoughts about eating over time. And instead of thinking about losing weight, thinking about eating healthier and the weight loss will come as a byproduct of that if you eat better. I mean, 90% of Americans don't get enough fruits and vegetables. That's alarming to me. I mean, that's a scary thing because of all the things that you could eat, that some of the, the best with the vitamins and the nutrients in fruits and vegetables, especially vegetables really don't have uh, sugar, a lot of sugar. So that is a problem. I know that people really uh, need to overcome. And by having these types of meals, you incorporate that into their meal plan. So tell us a little bit about the program Bistro MD what types of ingredients you use and how people can get these meals if they're interested. Yeah, so the way to get it is bistromd.com. There's uh, several different plans that people can um, join. They're a subscription model, meaning that you sign up and weekly meals are delivered. Um, One of the most popular models is three meals and three snacks. Those are for people who really want to get started and have maybe some goals of weight loss right away. Like, as you said, it is important that people eat healthier, 
But when you have metabolic things going on, sometimes that's not enough. You incorporate mm -hmm. more fruits and vegetables, but you're not getting the right amount of protein at meals. You're not getting everything in a caloric way that works. So sometimes you have to have much more structure with getting all the things you do need in a way that's pleasurable to eat. Um, some people will do five day programs or seven day programs and the meals are delivered frozen. They're made with minimal processing. The ingredients are clean. There are a whole list of banned things that are not in Bistro MD, like at Whole Foods, you know, all these things, those are not allowed in our foods. We want the food to taste good, but we also want it to be good for you. And one of the things that specifically we look at is sodium, the amount of fat, the amount of sugar, um, trying to make sure we have the right amount of protein, really trying to get the fiber up there and all the nutrients and antioxidants that we can in real food. So there, it's a balanced program, which is so important for all of us. And fat, you mentioned fat, fat is not a bad thing. We do need that in our diet, but the right type of fat. So just want to end on that note, because so many people try to cut fat out of their diet, then they're hungry all the time. And that, that's a whole, that's a, we could do a whole topic on that. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. So thank you so much for joining me again. Where, what is the website? www.bistromd.com. So MD for like medical doctor or even metabolism dysfunction, which so many people who struggle with weight have. And I love your website, the doctor and the foodie, you and your husband together working on this. I think that's fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Caroline Cedarquist. Really appreciate your time. Thank you, Robin. And thank you for being with me today for Living Well with Robin Stoloff, empowering you to live a healthier life. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll keep you updated on my most recent episode. Till we see you next time, please stay safe and keep living well.